Hello everybody and welcome to the gorgeous west coast of Canada. We are here in the Callahan Valley in British Columbia, just outside of Whistler. And we're at the top of a mountain right now. This is Sprout Mountain. We're just about 5,000 feet up in elevation. And you guys probably won't be surprised to hear that I did not hike up here myself. Let me show you how we got here. This is how I got up here today. That of course is the Ram Rebel and that's the Ram Power Wagon. And if you want an off-road pickup truck from Ram, here are your choices right here. So really the question becomes, which one should you buy? Well, let me tell you, there's a bunch of fundamental differences. Of course, that's an HD, that's a half ton, but there's plenty more features that you can get on one truck you can't get on the other. So in this video, we're gonna discuss all of those different features and then I'll show you which one of these trucks tackles this mountain trail better. Let's do it. So all the trucks you're gonna see in this video, guys, are 2019 models, and for 19, the Rebel and the Power Wagon are both brand new, and for 2020, they're basically just gonna carry over unchanged. Now, there is one exciting off-road truck from Ram I have to tell you about. That is the 1500 TRX. Now, it has been confirmed this is coming, a Ram Raptor fighter. We've already seen the TRX concept, and I cannot wait to get behind the wheel of that thing. But for now, let's talk about what's in the existing lineup, the Rebel and the Power Wagon. So what are the major differences between these two trucks? Well, first of all, I already put out a video here on the channel explaining those differences, so make sure you go watch that video because in this one, we're really just gonna focus on off-roading. But still, let me hit the high points. So the Power Wagon back there, that's a 2500. The Power Wagon is a heavy duty, whereas the Rebel comes on the Ram light duty. So that basically means the Power Wagon is bigger, it's longer, it's heavier, whereas the Ram is definitely a little more compact. And out here on these trails in BC, we are on some really tight stuff and it definitely made a difference so check out here's our first off-road obstacle it's just a tight corner and you can see the difference a power wagon coming through versus a rebel it's gonna get it look at that the rebel made the turn now let's see if this black power wagon can do it Oh, he's taking the wide line. There's the wide line. Nope. Power wagon's just too long, got too much wheelbase for these tight mountain switchbacks. And guys, take a look, it's getting pretty muddy out here right now. It's been raining all yesterday and last night. So we're definitely putting these Goodyears to the test too. And, needless to say, so far so good. So what are all the upgrades you need to know about here on the Rebel? Well, the Rebel gets a one inch lift from the factory. Now it comes with standard steel suspension and out back it gets coil springs just like every other Ram 1500. But on this Rebel here today and all the Rebels we've been driving, we've been using the four corner air suspension. And that actually allows you to lift the body up by a little bit over two inches to make sure that you can really get everything up and clear of the obstacles. This Rebel also has an electronic locking rear differential. It has a full skid plate package, a set of 33 inch Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires, big beefy tokes in the front that have a larger opening so you can actually get in there and access them. And then of course it just gets unique styling both inside and out. So now let me run down all the basic off-road gear here on the Power Wagon. So like I mentioned, this truck definitely gets more than the Rebel does. You're getting that same set of 33-inch Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires. You're also gonna get, uh, hello. What, what, man? You got something in your ear. Did you come all the way to British Columbia to clean my ears? Well, you can't what go you? on camera what? with crap in your okay, ear. Okay, get out of here, that's enough. Go, go, sure, go. Come on, come on, that and kids, come on. I know, right? <laughs> So anyways, this power wagon, like I said, it has a 33 inch set of Goodyear Wrangler Duratrac tires. You get a disconnecting front sway bar. That's one piece of kit that you do not get on the Rebel. You get that Warren Zeon winch up front and you even get a body lift which brings ground clearance up to 14.3 inches. Yes, it's a mega amount of ground clearance on the power wagon. However, down to the differential, yeah, it's only about 8.3. 
All right, everybody, now we're behind the wheel of this power wagon, and we're already right in the middle of putting it to the test. I have the hill descent control on right now, and we're coming down a fairly steep hill right here. And I have to say, the real key with this system is it's incredibly smooth. When these systems first came out, it was a lot of a hard bite, and then it would let go. It'd be nah, nah, it'd be very jerky, but you can probably even see just from what's going by my window there. The system's just super smooth. There's no weird ABS noises. There's, you know, it doesn't sound like the truck's braking. Uh, yeah, hill descent scent control in the power wagon is really good. Now other impressions, first of all, when you get in this truck, I think the first thing you kind of notice is just how high up you sit. It has a great tall seating position. It feels really kind of natural for off-roading. You can really kind of see around the truck. Uh, the, the sight lines are okay. You do get this sort of big bulge in the hood, which makes it a, a bit tricky to see down over. But this truck did get a 360 degree camera system this year. So let me show you that. And there is a great front view, which will help you see over your hood. This is a new feature in the Power Wagon for 2019. This truck now gets a 360 degree camera. So I just threw it in reverse. This is the first view you get. Then you get that rear cross path. This is a huge one for off-roading. The front cross path really can help you on your trail. See whatever's you know, right in front of your bumper that you can't see over the hood. Then you have the top view and the front view. And this also has the dynamic line. So as you turn the wheel, it will show you exactly where your wheels are gonna end up. And then finally you have your hitching views. So this line is if you're hitching up a fifth wheel, then you can go over here and if you had a hitch in there, you'd see it. Hit the plus, zoom in on your hitch. We don't have a hitch, just mud right now. And then this is a great view. You can actually see right down the sides of the truck and it's adjustable. So if you wanna see further to the right, go right. Further to the left, go left. So there's a really great camera system here on this Ram. Well, that's just dangerous. We're gonna go right off the cliff. Now under the hood of the Power Wagon is the 6.4 liter Hemi V8 and it's still the only engine that you can get in this truck which was something that I definitely disappointed a lot of fans when this truck was revealed in 19 that Ram didn't bring the diesel over into a soft rotor. Now if you ask Ram they're going to tell you that the diesel is way too heavy, it's not designed for off-roading, it's more of a towing engine which is all true but Ford has them beat now with the Tremor because you can get a brand new Ford HD Tremor with a diesel engine. So, you know, we'll have to wait and see if Ram reacts to that. I hope that they do. And, you know, in the not too distant future, we'll see the 6.7 Cummins in this power wagon. Now that said, it's not like there's anything really wrong with this 6.4 liter gas V8. It sounds really good and it does make 410 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. So it's still plenty of power and especially once you have this truck down into four low, uh, you really feel the torque come on and even climbing these steep muddy hills, it's been absolutely no issue for the power wagon. And there was one powertrain change for 19, and that is the new eight-speed automatic transmission. And thanks to that eight-speed, you get a lower first gear, which actually just ends up meaning an, a lower overall crawl ratio. All right, guys, we're almost at the top of Sprout Mountain, and I wanna show you something here. So there's the Rebel, you see how tall it is? Now check out this tree. You see all these marks all the way up to the top there? That is the bottom of a snow cat that comes along and grooms. So they get so much snow here, I mean, again, just for reference, look where the truck is. The snow level goes to all the way up there on the tree in the winter time. If you guys are into snowmobiling, this is definitely the place you wanna to come to. Now this Power Wagon shares the same tires as the Rebel, Goodyear Wrangler Duratrax. And in my experience with these tires, and I've driven them on a number of different vehicles in a number of different scenarios, they're a really good off-road tire. And of all the all-terrains, I feel like they actually skew a little more towards off-road than on-road. They're a loud tire on-road, I will tell you that, compared to a BFG K02, say, this is definitely gonna have more highway noise. But then when you get off-road, they do a really nice job. And uh, I've actually been surprised at how little wheel spinning we've been doing today. So this power wagon just feels like a beast out here on the trail, but now it's time to go get into its little brother, the Rebel, and we'll continue down this trail. And uh, at the end, I will be able to tell you which one your money is better spent on. <laughs> Now I'm here in the Rebel guys and there is an immediate difference you feel. I think maybe the biggest one is the ride quality. The Rebel here is a much softer ride. 
you're much more comfortable in this truck. The power wagon really does beat you up, even over the smallest potholes, it is still quite stiff. Now our Rebel here, it does have the four corner air suspension, which is obviously playing a big role in just how nice it rides. But you know what, just in general, the power wagon's gonna be more stiff because it's way heavier and it's a heavy duty. There is another thing you sacrifice too, going for a power wagon over a Rebel, and that's towing, which is surprising because that's an HD. Because of all the off-road gear, the, the power wagon just is so set up for off-roading and not for towing that the tow rating suffers. Um, and now I also want to look at payload ratings. And rather than look up the max ratings, let's actually just go look at the door jam stickers and see what these trucks that are sitting here today, let's see what they have for payload. So let's look at the payload here, guys. This is a Rebel Crew Cab. And payload rating comes in at... 1,391 pounds, certainly not a huge payload. Now let's go over and take a look at the power wagon, see what the door sticker tells us. This truck is rated at 1,354 pounds. So even though this is an HD, payload is actually basically the same between these two trucks. So now let's talk flex and I have a good demo to show you. So here you're gonna see a power wagon and a Rebel, they're gonna hit the same obstacle and you'll see the difference in wheel lift. Now this truck should flex a little bit more and oh still on there's the lift just barely though let's go backwards and hard that way and a little bit of uh, go that way the running forward. board there and that's also why if i'm honest i would not get running now boards on good. a power wagon you'd rather have some rock rails down there up, all right, here comes the Rebel through the same obstacle. So let's watch the wheel lift now and see if it lifts as much as the power wagon. It should lift more, because this truck does not flex quite as well as that one. So let's see. There it goes. Yeah, it's lifting way earlier, way higher. Oh, <laughs> that's some serious wheel lift. Oh, but she's handling. Beautiful. And look at that, with no running boards on there, it didn't scrape, unlike that power wagon. You definitely don't want running boards for this. But the wheel lift was definitely more significant. Now that's thanks in part to that disconnecting sway bar. That just means that the power wagon can flex more, but it's also because the power wagon is still solid axles. You still have a solid front and rear, whereas here in the Ram, we have independent front suspension. And of course, with IFS, you're just never gonna flex quite as good as with an axle. So now it's almost time for the verdict, but we do have to talk about pricing. So here in Canada, the Power Wagon and the Rebel are actually pretty close in price. A Rebel starts at just under 60, and a Power Wagon starts at just about 65. So really not a big jump in price if you do want to go for the bigger truck. And then of course, if you load a Rebel up, well, these two trucks are absolutely going to cross paths when it comes to price. And again, for my US folks, I'll throw the pricing up here and I'll actually throw up starting prices and as tested prices so you can get a good sense for what these trucks are worth. So now if it was my money, if I was buying a truck for let's say 70K, which one of these two am I getting? I'm getting the power wagon. I can live with sacrificing some on-road ride quality and just dealing with the size of that truck. I can deal with all that and, and, and it's totally worth it for the off-road gear that the power wagon brings along. It's just so hardcore. Uh, we didn't even come close to its limit today. And that's actually a great feeling too, knowing that you have way more gear than you're gonna need because then you, know, you just feel confident in just about every single situation. And I can certainly see myself pushing that truck even further. So yeah, I, like I said, I could live with some of the, the negatives and definitely be okay with them for just how cool and powerful and off-road capable that truck is. Now, of course, I'm not knocking the Rebel. This is a solid truck as well. Looks great inside and out, and it will deliver a really comfortable ride if you're doing lots of highway or city driving. Um, but overall, my money, I'm taking the PW.
All right, everybody, we are back at our hotel now. We had a great day out there on the trail, and these Ram trucks really did serve us well. Both the Power Wagon and the Rebel are really competent packages, but if you want a hardcore off-roader, you gotta get this 2500 Power Wagon. It is an incredible truck. So guys, that's it for this video. Make sure you go below, hit like, hit subscribe, and then come right back here to the channel for the latest news, views, and real-world reviews. See ya.